Um, all right, we, we're going to start from a clean sheet, let's say, just something. And I said I'm, I'm going to write a code that is uh, reading uh, a text file line by line. I'm going to do something with those lines, right? So the very first thing that every Java developer does uh, to execute something, what do you write? You know, static void main. Static void main. You don't write hello world. It, it would be very nice if we could execute just hello world, but now we have to write public static void main, and we have a shortcut for that, right? Um, this is something that is called live templates. In ID, those who are using IntelliJ for quite some time or, or actively, they know about live templates, and actually it's a good feature that is available in many IDs. Um, in some IDs, it's called snippets. Here it's called live templates. It has some extra abilities, which we will talk about later. But uh, to write the main method is just the PSP SVM shortcut and we uh, generate it. So to start reading the file, Java developers know it. What, what do we need? What kind of API we use to read the lines from the file? Talk to me. I want to, you to think. OK, it's a buffered reader because we are going to read line by line. So now to actually uh, write this file, uh, write this type, what I did, I was typing two first letters from, from the name of the class, right? And as you see, uh, the R is not a capital R. It's a small r. Right? That's like a small thing to notice. And uh, of course, now we get this buffered reader on the top of the suggestion list, and we can proceed typing. So uh, the hardest problem in computer science is naming things, right? So IntelliJ helps with that as well. And now we have to assign it. Uh, now we already have a choice. Whether we, as like uh, seasoned Java developers, uh, would do it the old way, or if we are like a fancy hipster Java developers, we the new way. The new way would be using the files and get the buffered reader, or um, the, the old way would be typing something like new and you know assign something here. So what do you do here to actually quickly get a name of this control class? Shift, space. Of control, control shift space. Ah, control. control shift space. Space you get a couple of uh, nice classes to, to use or if you did it the new way we could use uh, chain completion. So if I do it I, I press the shortcut once, I get nothing. But uh, the hint there, I don't know if, if I can zoom in. Um, let me try. Does it zoom in? Yes. Uh, so it suggests me that I can, I can type it again. I could type the shortcut again. Uh, let me unzoom. So if I do it twice, I get a chain completion which means that it will not suggest just a type, but it will check all the types for the methods that could return something that works here. Right, so this is the new way. But we proceed with the old one, and we need a buffer reader, we need a file reader, we need a file, we need to uh, give a name of the file, and so on. And now we ended up with a broken code. What should I do now to fix it? I'll enter it would not work here because my cursor stands somewhere in, in the end. F2. F2, right. So that was the uh, answer I was looking for, F2. Do you know how F2 works? Just to the first error in the file. Okay, but I'm on, in the end of the file. Shift F2. So F2 actually would work as well because it, it's in the end of the file. It's, it's the only error. It's cyclic. It will go to the end of the file and start from the beginning, right? When I don't have any errors in the file, but I have warnings, it still works. It will start jump over the warnings, and Shift F2 jumps the other way around. So now I, I with one stroke, I uh, get to the point where I can uh, enter Alt Enter and fix it. Um, not going to handle it right now, but this structure is a little bit ugly and uh, well one of the things that we like there is to extract variables right so if we try to extract variable standing on the string uh, it 
IntelliJ will suggest us a few options, whether we want to extract one line, just a string, or the file, or the file reader, and so on. Okay, in could be okay. Uh, so we have just a couple of warnings left, but we are going to address them later. Uh, so now I was typing from left to right. So I, I, I typed the f first the, the left-hand side of the expression, I typed the right-hand side, I extracted the variable and so on. Now I can do the similar thing, but typing the right-hand side of the expression and let's see how it helps us. So we are going to read the lines, line by line, and store them in, in a collection, right? So new array list, for instance, and that's going to be an array list of strings, and uh, uh, close, close the expression. So we have a right, right hand side. Now, left hand side, easy to get, right? We can extract the variable again, and let's see what happens. So first of all, it removed the, the parameter from the right side. So there is a diamond. In, in Java, you don't have to, in, in, since Java 7, yeah, since Java 7, you don't have to type the parameter on the right. So it removes it from there, uh, puts it on the left-hand side, and, and uh, suggests uh, an interface, right? There is a small pop-up on the top of the variable name, you can see. Uh, probably is too small for the back rows, so I can try to zoom in again, right? Declare final, it says. And in the bottom here, uh, always pay attention on, on the bottom for every pop-up in IntelliJ, there is a small hint that what, you can, what else you can do in this context. So in this context, it tells me that if I press uh, shift tab, I can change the type. The type that it suggested by default was list. For whatever reason, if I don't like to program uh, for interfaces, maybe I can just put array list in there. And if I don't want it to be final, I can, uh, without actually clicking the checkbox, I can uh, push option F and remove that checkbox from there. So I didn't have to touch the in my case, it's a type pad, but anyway, uh, professional programmers would have a proper keyboard with a, with a mouse. So in this case, I didn't have to touch the mouse. Uh, okay, strings. So we have three lines of code right now. Uh, is there anyone who actually learned something today already? Success. <laughs> this is both people who didn't use uh, IntelliJ previously. No, like from, from, from those people who used IntelliJ, I hope that you already learned something. Uh, now, okay, so we are going to read those lines uh, one by one, and uh, we are going to need a variable for that, line, and read it from oh, line equals. So now we can use this chain completion again. I, I have to uh, call a read, read line, but I don't remember exactly how to do that. I can just type this short, magic shortcut twice again and it will suggest me some options and one of the options uh, accidentally, it's on the top, I can select that one and it actually works for me. Uh, it should be null and then I use statement completion. By the way, if you probably from the back rows, it's not visible, but on the bottom there, uh, whenever I press the shortcut, there is a little pop-up that shows the shortcut that I did uh, press. But uh, as I said, it's not the goal for you to learn the shortcuts today, just the features. So again, we, we are somewhere in the uh, body of the loop and we have a broken statement there. So we get there by pressing F2. And uh, now, why is it broken? Because it actually throws IO exception. Uh, but our uh, method declares that it throws file not found exception, which is a subtype of IO exception. So if you are going to um, fix it right now, alt enter, uh, it's going to replace file not found exception with IO exception because it doesn't have to be duplicated there, right? Easy. Okay. So uh, next one is my favorite. Um, 
I, I showed you a few completions already. So like the basic one is uh, control shift, uh, the smart one, control shift uh, space and so on. Um, now I want to put this line into, a, into an array, right? So the array that I'm going to use is strings and the line that I'm going to put there is line, variable line. So string, and I know that uh, strings has an add method that I'm going to use to put this line in. So by typing s dot a, I get a proper completion already without actually typing out this variable name fully, strings, I didn't have to do that. Uh, and then obviously line works here as well. Now, how many options could you think of to complete this statement here, to put the semicolon at the end? I once presented at some uh, user group and we thought about six options. What, what strokes could you type now to actually close the statement? Command right and just type semicolon. Command. Command com right. I, I could put it right. It's just one character. I don't have I to put. Have to type one character. No, no. I mean, I one character away from the place where I have oh, to. Okay, you just press uh, right stroke and semi type Okay, semicolon. arrow and semicolon. Yeah. Right, easy. Another option would be. Just type semicolon. Yes, that's the best one. Semicolon. <laughs> or if you if your line is if your cursor is standing somewhere here, could the statement completion command shift enter closes the statement, right? But that's one that one is the best one. Get the sticker to yourself. Um, so now, okay, I'm reading the lines from uh, from the source until there is a null, right? What if uh, the line that I just read? is not null, but it's empty, and I don't want it to be there, right? Uh, I, I should check it, right, if, and something. So normally, what people would do is start either using the mouse, put a cursor here, enter, put, so, like, manually, all the things, right? Uh, or you can do, actually, you can use live templates again. Like, in the beginning, we used the first one, PSVM generated a, a main method for us. But you can surround with live templates as well. So in this case, we are going to need an if statement that is going to surround this line here, right? So if I uh, press Command Option T, it's going to give me a list of options of those live templates that are capable for surrounding the statement. I'm going to use the first one, if, and you know I have it generated. So I didn't have to spend time navigating my cursor somewhere. Now I'm going to check if the line is empty, right? Line is empty. Oh, I actually need the line to be not empty. So I forgot to type the exclamation mark right, for this expression. Uh, so instead of uh, going back with the short uh, with with the cursor and uh, or deleting everything. So what I th I see normally that if the first character is incorrect, people just delete the whole statement and start typing again. Instead, you can actually type the exclamation mark right here, and uh, what happened now is that it put the exclamation mark in the beginning, completed the statement, and put the cursor in the end, right? Okay, so we have a loop here. Um, pretty, pretty nasty loop. If we wanted to use a better API that came in Java 8, we probably could do that in streams. Uh, those who use IntelliJ, they know that in any uncertain situation, you can hit Alt Enter. So let's try that. Alt Enter and uh, replace with Collect. Boom. So instead of using, uh, like reading line by line, we get this fancy new API in place. Um, all right, so we, we have read in our uh, lines from, from the file, what if we wanted to do something with the collection which should be used in some API that accepts not the collection but the array? How many times you had to write to array? 
that's pretty common, like pretty common operation, like every time. So there is a life template for that, 2R, which would suggest you something. In my case, there are not so many, not so many variables that would uh, suit here. So it was like automatic, it just expanded the expression, but otherwise it would hit the auto completion and suggest me what, which uh, variable I, I want to convert. So it should be string, uh, ah, what I'm doing, something is wrong with my keyboard actually, keyboard. Okay, um, so now it actually tells me that you generate, I generated a statement for you, but uh, blames me for writing a bad code. Sure. Sure. Better for Good. Better. Thanks. Um, wait. I can even zoom a little bit. So it tells me that I have written the bad code, although it generated it for me. The thing is, the live template is not updated, and I'm using the Java version, which is uh, a little bit more recent than Java 6. Uh, so it tells me there is like a, a long. Uh, let me show you. It's, there is a long explanation, which we will not read right now why it's not correct. But basically, uh, the point is that this method is intrinsified in uh, Java Virtual Machine, and we don't have to give it the correct size. Uh, instead, it's, it's better to use just zero, and we can fix that. And Again, we, we extract a variable. So this statement was written like, again, using life template, right? We could do it in a normal manner as well if we started from the left-hand side and wanted to uh, just autocomplete this thing. Smart autocompletion would work here as well, like doing it twice would give us a few options. The, and by the way, this one is correct. So we could do it this way as well. Now, the other cool uh, auto-completion um, that I want to demonstrate is that, for instance, I, I want to sort this array somehow, uh, and I know that there should be some kind of a sort method somewhere, but I don't remember where. Uh, so there is, you can, you can type the name, sort, and press the normal auto-completion twice, and it will be auto-completing for, like, searching for uh, the static methods within your class path. An array sort is what I'm looking for. Array. And now we can do something with the array. For instance, uh, iterate over uh, and generate loop and say we want to print something. So I'm, as you see, I'm using uh, live templates a lot. Uh, but one application of the live templates is not just generating the code, but it's kind of a hybrid between the completion and live templates themselves. So in this case, if I wanted to print out uh, S, for instance, so there are live templates for that, south and put S here, or another one, uh, south V, and it generates some kind of a formatted string. But we, we also can use those live templates in a little bit different way typing S and then the live template name and then expanding it. So it works almost like surround with, but as auto-completion. And we can, we can do other things like uh, line, for instance, and then put a var and get a variable the same way. So the semantics is like a call and a method, but then it wraps with a live template. Yeah. So, or try, like this, something like this. Okay, so there could be a question, how do I create my own life template? You probably know. In settings. Sorry? In settings. In settings. Like, I have to go to settings, find this place. Common shift A, life templates. Common shift A, life templates. That's even better. Uh, or shift shift save as live template like this by the way in the new version how many of you are using the latest stable release which is 18.3 okay so in the recent release 
this UI element was actually generified for many actions. So before that, shift shift was listing only like it was only searching for the settings and for the actions. Uh, now they um, unified it for classes, files, symbols, actions, and you can switch between them using tab, right? Uh, and uh, by default, when it's uh, not searching, it actually shows the recent files. If you didn't know about that. So save live template as, yeah, save live templates. And we have this formatted string already here. Uh, now what you can do here is put some kind of abbreviation, like let's say we put a loop here, loop. And uh, we, obviously it's like a snippet now, a snippet of code. So we have like abbreviation, if we uh, press the expand button somewhere, so the, the default is a tab or a space or whatever you want it to be. Um, then it expands, right, to the snippet of code that we um, saved in here. But those snippets could have placeholders as well, and those placeholders can have different meaning. So for instance, what if we wanted to um, automatically, uh, when we type this, like abbreviation, it expands, and we want the cursor to jump in a specific place, and uh, call some action automatically without us actually pressing com command space or control space, whatever. We can actually place a placeholder in here. Uh, blah. And then, then when it's, when it's uh, written between the dollar marks, dollar characters, then it's treated as, as a variable. And for variables, we may expand it a little bit We, we can assign an expression to that variable by, by default. What is an expression? There are some uh, actions that you can assign it to, it, like com completion, no. Uh, capitalize, class name, so it gives a string, but uh, there is also something like a completion, there should be. Maybe some variable complete. Complete was there? Where? 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 Oh, yeah. Done. Okay. So, complete, and that's it. But so, you have to put the same value to the, to the for loop. The same name of the variable you. No, it's not the point that I'm okay. making right now. It's just. I want to show that you can generate any snippet of code and start, you know, uh, putting some placeholders. And the final placeholder is called end by convention. So if you put end, this is where uh, your cursor will end up when you finish, you know, typing this, um, this snippet. So let's try that. Maybe it doesn't work, but lope. And you see it called auto completion automatically. So there are other options, you know, you, that you can experiment with and create pretty sophisticated uh, templates for yourself. All right. Oh, why did I? I didn't finish yet. Okay, so we now have uh, one warning left. Actually more, but now it's definitely one. Uh, we can fix it. Surround with try catch instead of handling it somehow. Um, obviously here we can also replace it with for each and we will have a fancier looking program. Instead of 20, uh, 20 lines, we, ha we are having less lines. Any questions now? Yeah. How much time does it take to learn all those shortcuts? <laughs> the point is you, you shouldn't be learning those shortcuts. Uh, Okay, there are like different approaches that people take. I, I for instance, was, um, when I started using IntelliJ, at the end of the day, I was checking a productivity guide, which is, ooh, where, where, it's here. So the productivity guide in help menu actually collects the stats, 
how many times you have used something and then you know tells you that at the end of the day you can check which uh, which uh, of the features you never used and try to see maybe it's something that you wanted to use another another hint that you can use is to install a k promoter plugin x not the k promoter plugin but X at the end, uh, which suggests if you if you, by default it tells you if if you did something manually with the mouse, right? If you did some if you click something with the mouse, it uh, starts counting, and if, it, if the count is over, then if it, I think it's three at at three by default, it will suggest you to assign an action if it doesn't exist yet. Uh, if there is a shortcut for that specific action, it will immediately tell you that hey. Um, you could have used a shortcut for that. Another option is a game called Cold Golf. You can install a plugin. It would uh, give you like a, it's basically like off, off time, right? So if you, if you are exploring the ID of, uh, uh, offline, like after the, the hours, uh, you can install the plugin. It gives you a snippet like in the initial state and it tells you could you, with the least number of stroke, get it to the other state, like generate something or, or modify something or navigate somehow? Uh, it's also something that you know could be useful. Or come to my talks and learn something from me. Do we have those same things in the writer, in the C-sharp side? Uh, maybe the Java-specific things are different. To, to C sharp, but most of the features, yes, they are. And maybe they are a little bit more implemented in a little bit different manner because Rider should be familiar to Visual Studio users, mostly, not to Java developers. All right, then uh, another thing that we could you know, proceed doing here is extracting methods. This is something that uh, all of you know, like extract the method, get string, so we get another method, uh, but now, oh, actually I, what I wanted to show here was a little bit different um, method, get strings. So in the recent version, we added like another cool thing. In this dialog, which is familiar to you anyway, we have another button uh, called preview, which actually will t uh, preview what will happen after the refactoring. Exactly, right? Side by side or the unified viewer instead of side by side viewing. It's like what, what will happen to your code. So refactoring done. Am I running out of time or? No. No? Okay, good. <laughs> I uh, just got so curious. <laughs> okay, fine. So let me transform this code a little bit instead of um, writing a program. Let's say I'm writing a utility and uh, kind of proceeding to this code reuse and what, what not like public it will be something else right not main but get strings and whatever consume um, void okay uh, so we have written the class we have methods in there and suddenly we decided hey we want to reuse it through the interface what should we do extract interface, extract interface or pull members up. Uh, there are two refactorings that kind of overlap a little bit, but we can proceed with uh, extract interface. You can press uh, enter on, this on the class name? Yeah. Uh, command shift R command shift T command shift R no, you, you are looking for refactor this menu, yeah. right? So refactor, yeah, I never remember the shortcut. So refactor this doesn't even have one for some reason. So it gives you, gives you the list of, uh, of refactorings. But anyway, I never go to this menu. I actually press con command shift and extract, uh, extract interface. Boom. Let me let me just move one method out. Okay, different main main if done. 
So we now have an interface. It added an override in here. Uh, it also moved, I think it did move, what happened? It moved uh, the, or declared a method in an interface. And uh, we, we can navigate between the interface and uh, the implementation right away, right? So as you can see, I'm not pressing any, anything. And suddenly I, this happened by accident right now although you cannot tell, um, we, can, we can create diagrams for these things as well. <laughs> uh, now, I moved only one interface, or uh, only one method to the interface, but I probably want the, uh, the other one. And uh, there is another refactoring code called pull members, members up. So I could actually add, get strings as well. Do you know why it's called pull, why not push? Push up, I always want to push. I, I, I think it, it's, it's uh, described in Martin Fowler's book. <laughs> so you should ask Martin for that. Uh, okay, so I was typing a lot and I didn't really navigate much. In, uh, in IDs, we don't really, or like in real life, I think you, if you are working on a big uh, code base, you are not really uh, writing a lot of code, but you are reading a lot of code. Is it like that? In many cases, right? So you actually need, uh, I, I think, I think I've, I've heard a, a story that people hate IDEs that they don't help reading the code and just generate boilerplate, but I really disagree with that because IDEs really understand, uh, help you to understand the code and the structure of the project. Um, in any case, and up until now, I was working in an in a editor window which looks pretty much like a Notepad++, even without line numbers, if you didn't notice yet. And I don't have tabs. And this is actually my working state. Um, the normal state for the IDE or for, for IntelliJ would be something like this. And uh, tabs and back get the tabs up again, uh, wait, sorry, what am I doing, yep, this one. So normally you have something like this and a normal screen when you have like, if you're a professional developer, you probably have a big screen, it's not a problem, uh, the, the, the real estate doesn't take too much uh, space on your screen, but on my small laptop here, I don't have an external monitor, I actually try to just remove everything and have only the, the editor. And uh, over the years, I learned not to use tabs at all because they are, you know, just wasting my time and uh, wasting my space uh, on the screen. And I don't really need them because I have navigation means for that. So I, I learned to work without them first. Uh, for some reason, it's jumping. Uh, so I don't have tabs. So if I need to navigate between files, I can use recent files or like shift, shift and uh, jump to the recent files back, right? If, if there is a list or a command E for those recent files and navigate like this. Uh, then if, I, if I'm already navigating like this, do I really need a project view? Probably not, I can just close it and you know, proceed using command E for navigation. And even, even the tool windows like, uh, let's say, Maven on the right, uh, I can navigate from there. So I probably don't need this, this part on, on, the, on the sides. So I pretty much end up with uh, line breaks, or line numbers, a navigation bar, and I, I thought that what if I go further and just get rid of that as well? So there is like a view and enter distraction free mode that I'm mostly using and I have shortcut for that to switch between those uh, different, different uh, modes, um, different views. So if I go to my normal view, I get this Zen mode and there will be a question, how do I get the functionality that on top of the screen, right? Uh, no, I actually had a different question. Yep. So this distraction-free distraction mode makes sense, but what if you want to have it 
like partially you only have uh, you only would like to keep line numbers because you kind of care and also the status bar because you want to know uh, whether or not your project still built so line numbers are here and the status bar <laughs> all right I know why, why you need a status bar because uh, you have um, you have adopted this thinking that if idea is doing something you want to see the progress bar or in the other case uh, you want to see the branch name which is on the bottom as well. Normally you only, you only select branch name when you, when you know, start working on a feature and this is you know like not every like 10 minutes. Okay but some people want to see their I know why why people if want it, or not, or you can you can use the shortcut to sw to switch between the views like fast enough. So I, I I told you about the functionality on the top of the screen. There like in the normal view there is a navigation bar and a few launchers on 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 the right. So to get the navigation bar there is a default shortcut that I'm not using. I'm using a custom one for myself. I get this navigation bar in front of me. Uh, like as a pop-up and actually it, it is almost a fully functional replacement for a project view so uh, you can you can not just navigate in this uh, bar by viewing the files like let me let me see if I have any other files okay probably have to unzoom a little bit so you, you can actually n navigate there and you can create new things, you know, new entity, new files from there. So in many cases, uh, a lot of people would start using this one as a replacement for a project view. Although if you are used to project view, you can still get it with one shortcut. Command one or control one in, in Windows, it's pretty easy to, to get it here, right? Uh, or command E gets you there as well. So that's that's just a matter. So you, you you get many ways to do one thing, but you you choose one which is most productive for you, and and uh, you stick with that, and you will be productive like really well. Okay. So uh, we have written some code. We have navigated it a little bit. Uh, imagine the scenario: you're working in the office, you're working in the feature, your your mind is flowing really well, and then there is a, an analyst coming to you and asking a question. You were in the flow, and then you you are not in the flow, and he's asking you to uh, to check something how the application works in some conditions, right? And you start navigating further, like navigating, let's say, to some uh, file, reading something, and you get the answer from him. And now you don't remember where you were. Like, where, where was my class, right? So there is a nice shortcut uh, for that as well to actually go back, um, navigate, and uh, to the last edited location. I have a custom shortcut for myself. Uh, those who use Windows laptop, they have this one uh, as a default. I think in, in some key, keyboard uh, layouts, it's also default, but for, for my version here, it wasn't the default. So shift command, uh, shift command backspace actually takes me back to the place where I was typing something and editing it, even though I was, you know, navigating through many things. Uh, the other way would be just uh, moving the cursor, like this is the uh, command option, uh, left is just the place where the cursor was before not the editing locations where it was yeah just navigation okay so let's let's proceed with the analysis uh, there, there is a very nice use case when you reading the program uh, and the program works this way, it accepts some data in, it processes the data, but uh, every time it passes something further. So in this case, I, I tried to emulate the situation. So uh, imagine we have a data flow class that accepts some kind of an argument and calls a flow method. Uh, and then the argument was assigned to a field. And then uh, the, the flow method is basically 
what it's doing, it's passing in this field further to the other method. The other method takes this ID and logs it, uh, register it, register to the database, register to the queue, and so on. You know, you, you, you go further and further deep in the code. And now you don't remember how you ended up here. Right? Layers below the beginning, right? So in this case, it's, it's a small example, but it could be much bigger. Uh, what we can do here with this um, ID, we can track it, how it was actually uh, moving through my uh, call stack. So there is an exp uh, a nice analysis called data flow, flow to here, analyze data flow to here. So if I click that, it will run the analysis for that specific uh, variable, how it was, you know, going through the application and so on through my through my code, and it will uh, give me the results as a call tree. How did my ID move? And here in the bottom, I couldn't put it like up. Actually, it's not moving. Oh, it does. So in, on the bottom, you can see that it detected that the ID was actually a part of argument that was assigned through the constructor. So it was, was not just tracking the ID through, um, through the method, uh, through the code chain, but it was actually detecting that it came through the field assignment. It could do the same way, vice versa as well, like if we started from the beginning. Uh, okay, so what's cool? Um, How do you switch between uh, different windows? So? Uh, on Mac, it would be the default shortcut, but I don't like it. I have installed a frame switcher plugin to IntelliJ and it has uh, out uh, F2 by default. So I'm just using that. That's do really you remember good. default? Uh, I do yep. remember default, but I need to take a look. Command, at command, uh, apostrophe. It's the default. Okay. Uh, command back tick, yes. Ah, so okay. Ah, but this, no, I like so this. whatever I was showing up until now, it's a small portion. <coughs> I hope it was already useful for you. So we are not going to proceed uh, further there. Um, there are many auto-completions, many analysis tools uh, built in into IntelliJ, static analysis tools, and so on. What I want to sh show now is a little bit of uh, esoteric features, um, two feature, two, three more features that I want to show. Uh, one is the, first of all, IntelliJ has integration with uh, data, like different technologies and it provides database support as well. Um, let me navigate to the normal mode, right? So we do have some sort of a database connected to my project right now. Uh, and we can even execute queries. That's, that's not something very uh, interesting. The interesting part is that, for instance, if I'm writing some query in, uh, in my code, a string, let's say SQL, and I want to select something from the database, select from, so it tells me, it's just a string. We don't get any assistance in here. Uh, we can tell IntelliJ that that string that I'm typing right now is actually uh, an SQL statement. Either using a comment or uh, alt enter again, so there will be like language injection. Uh, let me show that. <coughs> Inject language or reference, this is called. But I don't really like doing this because then it will store the settings in .idea local directory and your uh, colleagues will not profit out of that uh, because you will not put .idea under version control. Uh, instead, you can use comments as hints, like language equals SQL, and uh, IntelliJ will recognize that. And since we have a database connected, it will be able to actually start suggesting or completing my SQL statement like this. From owners where last name like, let's say, B, whatever, oh, like B. And 
Typing like this, it, it might not be very convenient in this editor, right? So there is an option to actually start editing this fragment uh, in a separate editor. And if you do format it here, it will be formatted in the, uh, your code here again. Now, very interesting thing is that I can execute this code from here as well. So, so since we know that it's, this string is already connected to the database, we can run, where is that? Run query in console, select the database and, well, it actually printed the same result in here. Uh, run query in console, maybe something else. Let me remove this part actually. Uh, run query in console, yeah, so we have it here. And uh, there are other things that you can do with this, uh, like when you start um, experimenting with the query, last name equals George, George, George. Aren't you supposed to sanitize this? Uh, it's first name. Oh, first name, of course. Thank you. First name. Uh, run. Run. So we have two results, like two um, sets of results, and maybe we want to compare how did it, the logic change and what are the results, so we can actually <laughs> compare those results side by side or even if there are a different set of columns, we can do that as well. So what I wanted to show here was basically the ability to inject the language, semantics of the language into a string. And it's not limited only to the SQL statements, of course, it could be uh, HTML, for instance. But uh, if you have few databases, can you tell what yes. database is like? Yes, when I, when I pre pre like hit uh, Run. run, it will, the pop-up will come up and you select which one you want to but run. But IntelliSense, no, it takes from all the databases. Uh, what, I have to check it, but before, when you do language injection, it will actually uh, you call, call you, you can choose then. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you are able to do that with a comment. Yeah, because the database settings are stored in IT yeah. folder. Yeah. So if you are using HTML, for instance, then well, obviously we start getting completion for HTML, like uh, head, you know, whatever else. But I don't remember how to type it anyway. So I, I better do something else. I better uh, call a fragment HTML head title P I don't know, table, uh, tr, td, and expand it. And if I'm lucky, it will expand. <laughs> and then use do like uh, multiple cursors to, to start editing it. OK. So one, two, three. The very last feature I want to show you uh, is a use case when you're searching for something in your code and your code b base is so big that the uh, search result is, is kind of a big list and it takes time to go over it. So for instance, the use case could be uh, looking for a specific code snippet in, in your project. Uh, let's say you are looking for all the methods that take a string as a parameter or any other type. Uh, and this type could be very popular. So if you type, uh, if you just look for find usages, you, you get thousands of results. Uh, so what could be the example? Let me see. Okay, tricks. So I have a use case for it. Imagine I have, yeah, I, I'm going to look for all the methods that take string as a parameter. It could be something else, of course. Uh, for what, what, how, how could you do that? Like, what, what would you 
what would be your go-to tool for looking for such methods? Yeah, some regular expression or structural search. Structural search. Regular expression could be, I don't know, can you express a seman type semantics in, in regular expressions? Like, give me all the instances of classes that implement uh, serializable, for instance. So there is a tool called structural search in IntelliJ. Uh, a little bit of disclaimer here is that uh, it's being reworked actively right now. So in the new version, it looks like this, but in the previous version, it's, it's something different. And uh, I just installed the new update yesterday and there were already something changed. Um, it's pretty powerful, but it's quite hard to grasp in the beginning. So if, we, if you need examples, you can check like existing templates. So for instance, give me Sherry, all the serializable classes, for instance, like this, yeah, with, with all the implemented things, or give me methods, uh, met methods, method calls, or like whatever, methods of the class, give me all the methods of, of the class, or of all classes, so if I, run uh, this search right now, it's going to, sh to look for all the methods in my project right now. So let me zoom back and I get all the methods. But I don't really specify any filters right now, so I just get the list of methods. Might be really long. Uh, so what I could do is to start uh, making my search filters more sophisticated to match whatever I want. For instance, um, I do have one prepared. Oh, it's a wrong one. All methods with string parameter. So the point here is that I'm going to specify a pattern of a syntactical you know, statement, or it could be a class, it could be a method call, it could be just a statement or whatever it is, and give it a semantics. So in this case, the structure of uh, this search reveals that it's going to be a method. And I give it, uh, like all the placeholders here, you can give them any name. So just, you know, dollars on the sides, they indicate that that's a placeholder which could, be, uh, could, could, could use the filters. So if I, if, I, if I specify the filter, I could, for instance, say that I want all the methods that are of type, that re return type is void, right? But if I don't specify that, then uh, there will be just arbitrary return type, right? Method name, I could also specify some sort of a mask for the method name if I know that I'm, I'm looking for a method that starts with something, it could be regex, whatever else. But can you have a regex in between this dollar signs? Uh, you specify it as a filter. Okay. Like edit filters. On the side there will be add filter, text, and it will be a regex. Okay. All right. So next we, I'm, I need to specify a mask for my uh, task at hand, right? I need to match all the signatures where at least one of the arguments or parameters is a string, is of type string. And it can be on the first position, third position, whatever position. Like, so it has to be, it can, it can start with any number of arguments, like left types of any types, right? So I don't specify any filter right here, but there could be a, a number, like a count, how many arguments could there be in the beginning? So I, I specify it as zero until infinity. I just type infinity and it puts this fancy mark in there. Uh, then there will be um, the parameter that I have to actually specify. This, this search is, is broken right now. Um, edit filters. It should be a string. 
then uh, it could be needed at least once. So there could be the mask here or like the, the count uh, filter here or we can just discard it. it by default it will be looking for at least one appearance of, uh, of this thing in, in, the, in the search. And then we have the tail, right? Like we can have as many parameters as there could be uh, in the rest of the signature. So if I type run right now, I, it finds all the uh, methods in my project where the where string is a is a parameter. So it's a very simple example right now. I mean, with the string, it could be something like data class or data object or whatever else like person or customer or ID, which is used everywhere in your project. So if you uh, type like uh, show usages, it shows you like 1,000 of results and you are not getting what you wanted to look for. So structural search is something that you can use to narrow down the search space, basically. And this is uh, a preliminary for structural search and replace. So for instance, what if I wanted to remove all those methods that I find? There is a structural search and replace where I can just specify empty replacement and find it and start removing those, like, for instance, this one, right? But that, does it remove only signature of the method? Or no, it will remove the method. Replace selected and it will remove the method, right? So this is also like a very simple example, but we can restructure the method a little bit. Maybe we, we have some coding conventions that we if you do an instance of check, we shouldn't be checking for null, for instance. And you can just remove the null check if you are already checking for instance of. Uh, and we, you can actually specify that in your inspections. Structural, structural search inspection. And specify your custom searches and replacements in, in this inspection. Um, let me remove it. So, for instance, this one that we just created, uh, what if I save it and call it blah? And uh, now I can go back and put it under the structural search in in inspection uh, at replace templates, the one we have created. Blah. And now IntelliJ will tell us that immediately it detected it and I can uh, put Alt Enter and replace it, you know, just remove it. Basically call this action that I just customly created uh, for myself. All right, I think we're about out, out of time and my battery runs out anyway, so uh, Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions for me, just you know, come to me and start asking. Otherwise, I have some stickers, some IntelliJ stickers, and I have some shortcut brochures as well for those who want to learn shortcuts. That's not a bad thing. Uh, thank you.